Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I am A.J. Hogue. This is the Effortless English Show. Join my VIP program today, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, and you speak English fluently, powerfully, confidently. You speak English effortlessly when you commit. Commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Disobedience, our topic today. Disobedience is the opposite, opposite of obedience. The verb, of course, is to obey, and the verb is to disobey. We've talked a little of this topic connected to Thoreau. I read a quote from Thoreau from his uh, quite famous essay, Civil Disobedience, which had a strong influence on um, Mahatma Gandhi, among other people. And today we're going to read a verse from the Dhammapada, which uh, is on a similar topic of disobedience, not obeying, right? Not obeying someone, whether that might be the law, that might be, you know, anybody telling you what to do. So we're going to discuss when you should not do that, when you should disobey, not obey. Just waiting a few minutes, letting the live audience join us now. I've left the comments open today. So before we start on the topic, I'll just introduce what is the Dhammapada. The Dhammapada means the path of Dharma, something, something like that, a translation. The path of Dharma. And you'll remember that Dharma means something like, you know, uh, well, I like Acharya's um, translation or definition of Dharma, which is the eternal, natural way, right? Eternal means forever, no beginning, no end, natural way, right? Another phrase we've used uh, that has uh, basically the same meaning as Dharma is natural law natural law. Some people will use the word logos, meaning the natural law of the universe, the Tao, God. Okay, so the path of that, the path of Dharma is what Dhammapada means. It's a book and uh, it is a collection of the sayings, some of the things, some of the teachings of Gautama Buddha, of the Buddha. The Buddha. When you when you hear the Buddha, they're talking about Prince Siddhartha, Gautama Buddha, who um, was from well, was born in modern day Nepal, lived in modern day India, and there are many, many, many what are called sutras in Buddhism, which are kind of longer, more detailed teachings from uh, the Buddha, and then later from others, but. Um, the Dhammapada is a little different. It's kind of a collection of sayings, of like little short sayings, little short, very short teachings, like a little paragraphs that um, the Buddha's followers collected and put together in this one collection. So it's, it's a very nice, um, if, if you're interested in Buddhism, especially what I would call original Buddhism, the actual teachings of Gautama Buddha, the Dhammapada is a very... Um, simple, direct uh, collection of Buddhist teachings. Some of the sutras can be a little um, difficult <laughs> to uh, read through and understand. They're so detailed. They have um, a good amount of philosophy in them. Uh, they have, uh, they discuss some pretty deep philosophical issues and, and uh, the, some of them, even just the style, can be a bit difficult. But the Dhammapada is very, very, very clear and direct and simple, kind of like a Buddhist Tao Te Ching is how I think of it, the, the Dhammapada. 
So anyway, that we'll be reading just one little line from it. I think we're ready. We've got enough people here now. Let me take a drink of water and we will start. Okay, then. Share my screen. Let me just put this down here. Share my screen. Okay, so this is from chapter 13. Now, of course, this is a translation. Okay, so if you're really, it's always good to find different translations of these kinds of things because different translators will use different words, which can change the feeling of the, the meaning a little. This one's by uh, S. Warren, an Indian guy. Uh, I think Amer uh, Indian, I was from India, but I believe he lived in America. But anyway, um, here's his translation. Number 13 is verse 167 from the Dhammapada. Don't follow wrong laws. Don't be thoughtless. Don't believe false doctrines. Don't follow the way of the world. So as you can see, direct, short, simple, concise. Has a, to me, it has a, a very similar feeling in, in that way to the Tao Te Ching. Which, one of this, this is probably my favorite of Buddhist teachings is the Dhammapada because it's so direct and simple. Uh, you know, other sutras are also great, but this one I particularly like, the Dhammapada. It's just so easy. You can just open it and read a paragraph and get something from it immediately. All right, let's review that. And let's just go through what 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 is the Buddha talking about. First of all, the world, we have to be careful. You know, you this basically means the ways, the way of man, right? Again, society, right? That's what... Uh, a lot of people in English, they will translate the world. What they call the world is really, what they really mean is human society, right? The way of humanity. Uh, when people talk about being worldly, you'll, hear, you'll see this as an adjective in English, worldly. He's a worldly person. What it means is it's someone with a lot of experience, uh, again, typically in human society. Lots of experiences, no lots of people have done a lot of things, Right? It's, it's, kind of, it's that feeling. So really what we're talking, we're not talking about being out in nature here. The Buddha is not, I don't believe, is talking about that. What he's talking about clearly, because the examples, like talking he's about laws and things. He's talking about society. So, and then very, very, very clear and direct. Don't follow wrong laws. So you can see right away, that's our topic today. Disobedience. Don't follow, don't obey wrong laws. Right, meaning laws that are, uh, you know, untruthful, that are bad, that are evil, that are harmful, etc., that are unjust. Uh, he doesn't say uh, start a revolution. He doesn't say kill anybody. Definitely not. He doesn't say hurt anybody. He just says don't follow the laws. That's it. Disobey. Simply don't cooperate. Just don't follow it. That's all. That's all he says. Just don't follow wrong laws. Don't be thoughtless, right? So don't be mindless, right? Don't just be ignorant or you don't know anything, you're blue-pilled, you know, and then just let yourself be blue-pilled because it's easy. He says, don't do that either. Don't be thoughtless. And then this next one is not easy, but don't believe false doctrines. So false doctrines means uh, a doctrine is like a, mm, <coughs> excuse me, uh, how do I explain doctrine? Let me look it up because I a doctrine is kind of like a teaching, I guess. Is I don't need to look it up. Um, I think that's the best way to explain it, the simplest way. Don't believe false teachings is probably a, a really simple way to understand that, right? Or false information, like for example, fake news, right? <laughs> don't believe it. He says, don't, don't believe false. So again, if you have to think about it for a minute, you have to realize that what the Buddha is telling you to do is to f uh, figure out truth, what is true and what is false. <coughs> Excuse me, because of course you have to know what is false. You have to recognize falseness. You have to recognize lies. Otherwise, you might follow them. <clears throat> and then follow, don't follow the way of the world. So he's saying, don't follow the way of 
society. Don't just, so he's kind of saying, like he's saying, basically, don't be a conformist, right? Don't just follow what is popular, right? That's, I think that's a good way to think of what the way of the world means, the way of human society. Don't just follow what everybody else is doing mindlessly. That's what most people do, right? If the news, if there's a bunch of fake news about something, <clears throat> right? Like now. He's saying, don't just be like everybody else. Just because everybody else or lots of other people are following along, don't follow the way of the world. Don't follow the way of humanity if it's false. Don't believe false information, false news, false doctrines, false teachings. Don't be mindless. Don't, right? don't try to just hide and close your mind and pretend like you don't need to know. And the big one, don't follow wrong laws. If there's a if there are wrong laws which are harmful or bad, simply don't follow them. Just basically ignore them. Ignore them and do what is right. So that's a very short and quick um, bit of advice on how to deal with these kind of things, and I think very good. And uh, I don't know if Mahatma Gandhi was influenced by that, but. That pretty much describes his approach. <laughs> if you look at Gandhi's um, strategies when he was fighting the British, help you know resisting the, against the British, leading uh, India against the British, this was you know basically his philosophy: don't follow wrong laws. He was very much against uh, you know revolution. He was you know quite famously against killing of all kinds and violence, even of all kind. But I think more to the point, and especially if we look at Thoreau and what Thoreau was saying also, he was saying the same thing, which is the simplest thing, especially for normal people, for everyday people, the simplest way to fight Brave New World, to fight bad laws, is not to protest, march in the street. You can do that. I mean, that's what Gandhi did. I mean, that's more of a direct, very political confrontation and fight which, of course, Gandhi did, he, but he was involved in the independence movement. But what th that's not what Thoreau did. Thoreau did, I think, a more what Gautama Buddha is teaching here, and he just simply stopped following laws that he thought were wrong. Now, in Thoreau's case, it was slavery. Specifically, it was slavery. Slavery was still existed in America at that time. And he just said, well, I'm not going to pay taxes because my taxes are supporting slavery and also there the war there was a war uh the mexican uh american war which he also thought was uh he didn't support so he just said okay he didn't protest he didn't go down to washington and have a big protest he didn't do any of that he just said i'm not going to follow these laws i'm not going to follow there were certain laws uh, about slavery that you're supposed to if you see a runaway slave you have to report them there Fair, you know, certain laws. And he just said, I'm not going to do anything to support that because it's wrong. And that's it. He just stopped supporting it. And his point was that if that that's all really you need to do, that's your main duty in life. Just don't follow wrong laws. You don't have to protest. You don't have to fight. You certainly don't have to be a revolutionary. You don't have to do anything like that. You don't have to get a lot of attention. And that just just as Gandhi said too, that if enough good people just stop helping evil, if enough good people just disobey, then the the power of you know whatever you want to call them the cabal the evil whatever, um, their power just poof, falls apart. You know, in Gandhi's case, you know he made the point that. There were so many Indian people and not enough British. If the Indians just stopped cooperating, not even all of them, just large numbers of Indians, all they needed to do was stop helping the British, stop following their laws, stop cooperating with them. And eventually, the British, it would be impossible for them to rule India. They didn't have enough people, enough power. There's no way they could do it by themselves. And he was right. And... Uh, this is basically what Thoreau was saying as well, that you just, you know, live, stop, oh, stop obeying wrong laws, just disobey, stop believing, and as the Buddha says, stop believing f lies, 
and then just live your life. Just live your life. Focus on your family, get out in nature, live a good life as best you can. You know, if you're really into politics, fine, you can go do politics and you can do protests if you want, but you don't have to, right? You're under no duty to do that. All you've got to do is just stop doing what's wrong. Stop obeying. And you can do it quietly. This is something that you'll see in Thailand. <laughs> I quite like about the Thais. Uh, I quite like it a lot. I, I don't think they do it so much po with a political mindset. But what the Thais are very good at doing, Thai people, I saw this, is that they don't care. In, in many cases, they don't care what law the government passes. But if they don't like the law, <laughs> if they think it's nonsense, they just won't follow it. They just ignore it. And you'll notice that there are certain laws in Thailand that basically everybody ignores. And it's a law, but the government can't do anything because nobody w will follow it. And so the government's powerless to do much. They can try writing tickets, you know, uh, for the, you know, to some people and okay, they, that happens some, but more or less it gets ignored. Uh, Americans are much f more fearful about doing this thing, sadly, but I'll say like a, a small, a very small example in America are speed limits. This is a very small example, but uh, especially on the highways, everybody ignores the speed limits. Everybody. So everybody goes, it's just common knowledge in America that if you're driving on the highway, you, you drive 10 miles an hour faster than the speed limit, that that's fine. Everybody does it. Therefore, the police, they basically cannot give a ticket for just, you know, eight miles an hour too fast. They won't do it because everybody will fight it. Everybody complains. Nobody will follow it. So they just give up. They, they only give a ticket if you go much faster than that, if you go significantly faster than that. Um, so, you know, it's a small example of where people by everybody just, or a lot, so many people ignoring the law, the law becomes pointless. This, the, the speed limit that's on the sign is not the real speed limit because people don't accept it and they don't follow it. They disobey it. So many disobey it that the real speed limit is actually about 10 miles an hour faster, something like that. Uh, I, and this is why, you know, my attitude about homeschooling, I, I have zero interest. I'm not interested in fighting the school systems. I'm not interested in changing them in any way. I think I agree with John Taylor Gatto that the school systems cannot be reformed. They cannot be improved, really that the system itself is evil and bad and trying to change this or change that really won't do anything. And instead of <laughs> protesting and fighting and complaining and on and on and all that stressful nonsense that never works, just homeschool, just disobey. Don't send your kids to school. Easy. You, not, you withdraw from that system completely. Now, one person does that. It's good for you. But when thousands do that, when hundreds of thousands, and now in America, millions of people, millions of families do that, which means, you know, several millions, lots of millions of children not in the school system, pulled out of the school system. It weakens the whole system. The whole system gets much weaker because the system needs kids. It needs, right? The whole point of that system is mind control of the children. Without children there, what are they doing? They're not doing, they can't do anything, right? Of course, homeschooled parents uh, typically will vote against any taxes that support the school system. In the American system, uh, schools get paid by the government, the federal, the national government, uh, for each child in the class. So each time a child leaves the school to be homeschooled, that school actually loses some money. And in this way, as homeschooling grows, the school systems become weaker and weaker and weaker. If enough people do it, when enough people do it, I hope, when enough families pull out, the whole system can just collapse. Even if it doesn't collapse, it gets much, much, much weaker. And, you know, all those children are free in those families. 
no protest necessary, no, you know, all they, they had to fight to change some laws. But quite honestly, uh, a lot of American families homeschooled even before the laws changed. They just disobeyed. They just said, no, I'm not sending my kid to school, period. I'm not doing it. And they refused to send them. And, you know, yeah, they can try to send out the police and write a ticket and all that. And they say, well, no, I'm not paying this. Right. And then the government is in a pretty tough position. Do we throw these people in jail? Uh, it looks pretty bad to be throwing parents, you know, good peer parents in jail. And uh, when there are, if, it, if it's just a few, maybe they can do that. But when it starts, when it becomes quite a lot of people doing it, they get a lot, then a lot of people start fighting back if they throw them in jail or do something like that. So mostly they try to ignore it or they try to give a lot of propaganda against homeschooling. But gradually they're losing in the United States. And for those of you in other countries, you know, you're probably behind America, some of you. Some of you, don't, the laws are not have not changed yet. It's not legal yet to homeschool. But maybe you just have to disobey those laws. And, uh, you know, of course, hopefully get them changed eventually. But maybe just disobey them. You just ignore them. Um, and that goes for the, the stupid virus stuff now. And like, oh, you can't go some places... Not, not where I am, but uh, in some places, you know, you're not supposed to go outside. You can't walk on the beach. Well, I'm seeing in America, people are starting to ignore that now. They're just going out on the beach anyway. And finally, the police leave because there's so many people coming and they've got their cameras in their face and they're yelling at the police and, you know, which is more of a protest, obviously. But eventually the police realize uh, we can't enforce this law. If people won't follow it, eventually... They have to just quit and give up. So this is the power of peaceful disobedience. And I'll just read that last, this section. One, I'm going to read it one more time from the Dhammapada, and then we'll go to comments. So this is Sayings of the Buddha, number verse 167. So the Buddha said, don't follow wrong laws. Don't be thoughtless. Don't believe false doctrines, false teachings. Don't follow the way of the world. Simple, direct, clear. Excellent. All right, let's get into questions and comments now. And uh, here we go. AJ, in the U.S., is homeschooling, is it forceful or optional? Ho homeschooling or schooling? I guess you mean schooling. Um... First of all, in America, there are 50 states. Each state has different rules. <laughs> Complicated. But uh, overall, home, homeschooling, meaning teaching your own children at home, is legal everywhere. Now, some places have rules you're supposed to follow, which a lot of families ignore. They disobey. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's in America, it is legal to homeschool in all 50 states. The fight for homeschooling will be from unions or the teachers, not from families, says Pablo. Um, the fight against it. Yeah, of course. The teachers' unions uh, are against homeschooling. Of course. <laughs> money, money, money for them. Right? They're part of it, right? The government, uh, you know, anybody who has power from the school system is, is typically against homeschooling. Doesn't matter. Disobey. See, that's the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about what other people think. You don't have to worry about who made the law or why or any of that. You just don't follow it and live your life and do it quietly. Yeah, like, you know, Vladislav mentions in Russia, they had a law against uh, criticizing the government and uh, people just disobeyed it. Yeah, you just ignore it. This is, this is, it's really pretty simple. 
<laughs> uh, you know, the best example we've been talking about, we have been talking about recently, is the media. The media has, uh, on one hand, right, we've, we've looked at the media, how powerful the mind control is and the lies. It's very powerful, these techniques. Seems powerful. But on the other hand, they are the easiest ones to fight. All you do is disobey, and how you disobey is you just throw it away. Don't watch it. Don't listen to it. If you don't watch the media and the fake news, if you don't listen to the fake news and movies and TV, then they have zero power. They don't influence you. They don't do anything to you. It's so easy. You just turn it off. That's all. Turn it off. So in this case, uh, their power is, uh, in fact, not much. It's all based on you. Their power comes from you cooperating. Your, their power comes from you joining voluntarily. They can't force you to do it. So that's great news, guys. That's really great news. Just turn it off. Problem solved. This means could lead to anarchy if it's exaggerated. We have to be careful. No, we don't. Don't worry about everybody else. There's always these kind of arguments. Don't follow evil laws. Don't follow evil. Uh, evil order is not better than anarchy. And it's not going to lead to anarchy anyway. This whole idea we need government and laws, that people will go crazy without them, is uh, there's no evidence for that. You know, if you just put a bunch of people together, like just good, decent people together, you don't need a bunch of laws. You don't need police. They'll just, you know, most people don't want to kill people and hurt people. And anyway, those are not the laws we're talking about. <laughs> right? Just quietly disobey. Don't follow the herd. Think. Analyze. Be a good example, says Ilana Khan. Yes. Excellent. All right, lots of people just saying hello. I'll jump down to the bottom. Yeah, Yaffa, this is somewhat true. The problem is, even if you don't watch news, people around you do. True. They talk about it. Yeah. So don't listen to them all day long, so it's affecting you in a way. You'll hear it, but again, you can also just avoid them. Just leave. People start talking about that stuff, just say, eh, okay. You don't have to be rude. No need to be rude, but just walk away. Just say, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Make an excuse and leave. Don't talk about it. That's what I do. I just change the subject. That's another thing you can do. Just change the subject. Oh, okay, yeah. And then say, talk about another topic. Um, so yeah, you'll still hear things, but it doesn't have to have any strong influence on you at all. Yeah, Arun says, the six best doctors. This is another saying from the Buddha. Sunshine, water, rest, air, exercise, and diet. Mm-hmm. That's better advice than almost any than anyone on TV about this virus is, is giving. <laughs> sunshine, vitamin D. They didn't know about vitamin D back then, but sunshine is going to is a, is a is super fantastic that's why it's stupid to stay indoors during all of this it's, it's bad advice sunshine water good diet etc yes rest air exercise all these great Doo -doo -doo. How do you, Mariano says, how do you coordinate such conduct? Don't. You don't need to coordinate it. You don't need to be a leader. Just do it. Just do it yourself. Don't worry about other people. Right? That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. You know, if you're really political, that's, you know, Gandhi was, was trying to coordinate this massive campaign, right? Leading it. But, uh, I, but what Thoreau did, what Buddha's talking about, the Buddha, and uh, what the Thai people are really good at is they just individually just disobey. But it just adds up because so many people do it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Thank you, Executive Protection Brazil. Again, good to see you again. Okay. Slavika says, I like the term civil disobedience. Yeah, that's Thoreau's term. And of course, I'm a disobedient student. I don't wear a mask, gloves. I don't keep a distance of two meters. I live like before. Who cares about Corona? Amen. Me too. Yep. Civil disobedience. It is a nice phrase. Civil. Uh, a few different meaning, kind of a double meaning of that word. But um, one meaning is civil meaning polite. Right? You can, if you are a civil person, you're polite, right? You're civilized. It's the same root, civilized, right? So you're not, you're not throwing rocks and going crazy. You're just not diso, you're just disobeying, but in a, in a quiet, polite way. That's what Thoreau did. Very nice. I agree. So, right, in, in terms of this, right? So, right, I just, I'm the same. I walk around, I don't wear a mask. I'm not, I don't yell at anybody. I don't say anything. I don't do anything. I'm very polite and quiet. That's it. Happy Victory Day. Russia beat Germany in the Second World War. Yep. So happy Victory Day to the Russians. Don't mess with Russia is one of the great military lessons of history. <laughs> Don't mess with Russia. You're going to lose. Ah, fat, Ruslan says fasting too is one of the natural doctors. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Food and lack of food. Good point. Yeah, Leonardo kind of focusing on a different one of the a different sentence in that what we just read. I'm enchanted from the part don't be thoughtless. Nowadays it's vital to have our own thoughts about everything happens around us. We must be able to figure out if it's right or bad. That's a good point that uh, nowadays where we have so much information coming at us, but so much of it is lies and distraction and trivia, meaning it's not important. And so this is maybe, well, certainly much more than uh, when during the Buddha's time. So this is one of our great challenges is, is exactly that. Good point. Ah, on the 7th of May in India, we had Buddha Purnima. Nice. Very nice. Good timing then. <laughs> Better to live alone. There's no, no, no fellowship with a fool. Live alone. Do no evil. Be carefree like an elephant in the elephant forest. <laughs> Nicely said, Aaron. Whoops. I think sunshine and exercise. Is that right, teacher? Yeah, sunshine and exercise and good food and fasting and all these very, you know, clean water. These are great. These are all uh, super, I mean, these are the foundations of health, right? Not, not drugs, not vaccines, not surgery. Jermila says, I love walking in nature, making pictures and videos, only thinking and enjoying God's amazing nature. I'm often disobedient to such stupid decrees of our rulers. Nice. <laughs> Albert Damani says, a Scottish friend of mine believes I'm not normal because I don't follow the news, and he does. He tells me that it's necessary to follow what's happening in the world. He's dead wrong. Well, why is it necessary? Is he changing it? <laughs> does knowing... I don't know, something happened in Texas really uh, affect your life in any way at all. It's crazy, right? You're, yeah, you're, you're, but you know, these people are blue pilled. This is the matrix guys. They're, they're so addicted to all of it. They can't even see that it's pointless. It's mindless. 
is just a distraction. It's meaningless to them. It has nothing to do with their lives. Right? If you're watching the news, you're gonna you're hearing all this random stuff from all these random places around the world. Even when they're true, it's it uh, like it, most of it has zero effect on your life. Why would you fill your brain up with that and get worried about it? You know, some crime that happens in in I don't know Kansas in the United States or a a plane crash in I don't know uh, Canada. Right. Well, if you don't live there, <laughs> well, it doesn't affect you at all. There's no point. You don't. Need, you can not. You can never hear about it, and it will not change your life. You don't need it. Yeah. Also, Slavica says in Serbia we celebrate Victory Day. Okay, um, in your money or your life, it says don't impress others. I think it will help the whole life because there is 1% who don't follow anybody and the others like a herd. Right. Good point. Right, make these decisions for yourself. Is it good to be individualistic and very selfish? Um, are we social beings? Of course we're social beings, asked Mariano. Of course we're social. Um, individual, I, I like the word self-reliant, very selfish, uh, you know, typically that has a neg that word has a negative meaning, which means you don't care about other people. I think most people agree that's not such a good thing. AJ, do you wear a mask when you go outdoors? No. <laughs> Kai Dorof says, I'm drinking vodka now. I'm drinking water, but. Here's to Russia. Here's to Mother Russia. Not my mother, but here's to Russia anyway. Good. Benvenuto says, Dear AJ, here in Italy, we had every afternoon at 6 p.m. TV news that told us the total amount of deaths. Yeah, they're doing this in America too. 70,000 deaths. Which is, first of all, it's a nonsense number. Do a little research. You'll see they're exaggerating that number. Uh, second of all, in a normal flu season, in, in a bad year, 70,000 can die. Uh, there have been flu seasons in the last, in my lifetime, where, you know, m more than that have died. So anyway, and we never hear even hear about it. Yeah, cool. Adil says, I've been, last night I've been sitting around with some friends in our neighborhood. Suddenly police followed us. We ran away. I ran away. I was going to spend some time in jail. <laughs> That's what you do. Run away. There's a funny video of a guy in California, I think. I think it's California. That, that he's just jogging on the beach. Uh, he's alone. No one else is there. He, they're not supposed to be on the beach f for some stupid reason. And he just ignored it. And then some cop, some policeman comes out to try to stop him. But the guys are a good runner, so he just keeps running and he speeds up and goes faster. The cop can't catch him. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, it's so ridiculous. Uh, okay, my comments are jumping around. That's why it's taking me a minute, guys, on the screen here. <laughs> Thorosov says, I decided to cut my hair. My mom said it's okay for now. But in general, you should go to a haircut service. You can't do it yourself. What do you think? I cut my own hair now. Um, I, now I just shave my hair. And then it grows kind of like now. In fact, I was just, I'm just thinking today that I need to cut my hair again. So I, I pretty much go for simple. I don't care about fashion. So I cut my hair only now. I just shave it, let it grow, and then I shave it again. <laughs> so cut your own hair why not <sighs> Funda says AJ I'm fasting of course Ramadan yep keep fasting working so hard but not because of having hunger because of the, the virus it's okay fasting will clear your mind hopefully 
good for you. Ezgi says, do you know about chemtrails and harp? Yes, I know some about these topics, but not enough to talk about them, really. I, I know what you're talking about. And he says, I know some people who get angry or stressed because of the news. Well, yeah, because the, uh, the techniques used uh, in the newscasts are designed. Th that's the point. They're designed to make you upset you, get you emotional, get you stressed, make you angry. And uh, you, the, the two most common emotions I think that the news is using against you are uh, fear and anger. Those are probably the most common because they're probably the two easiest to make people, you know, feel strongly. Right now, of course, fear, 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 fear. They're hitting you with fear and all these numbers and dead people. Do you know anybody? Have your has have, have one of your close friends died? Probably not. <laughs> so um yeah, you know, the fear or anger. That's another one they do. They use those two emotions. They get you really emotional, and then they feed you the lies. And your brain turns off when you get strong. The strong emotions come. Your thinking stops. Your, your rational brain basically turns off, and then they can put the lies in there, and, you'll, and they'll just go into that your brain, and you'll accept them. Arun says, and we're talking about haircuts now. Arun says, I did my own haircut. It went wrong. <laughs> I made it as a military cut. That's why I shaved my head. This is the good news, especially for men. See, for women, it's a little trickier. But um, for men, if you do, make, do a bad job, you can just shave, shave it, right? Like a monk or like military, like Arun said. Uh, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I understand. If you're a more fashionable person, Younger, maybe. I understand, you know. Probably looks better if you someone professional does it. I understand why women do it. Yeah, my editor, Bizune, says, This time we can practice haircutting, painting, cooking, delicious foods, and taking care of our family. Right. It's a, it's, these are all good things, right? Very good. Mahdi says, policemen every night chase teenagers by car. It looks like Grand, uh, well, like Grand Theft Auto, maybe. So the teenagers are, d are going against the rules, huh? Good for them. In this case, good for them. And see, I bet they're not even, uh, they're not even doing it for some great political reason. Um, but hey, at least they're not afraid. Yeah, Adil says, Trump yesterday said this virus will be gone without a vaccine. Is that true? Do you? I, yeah, I think it's true. 100% true. I'm glad he said that. So, yeah, Trump and Q, who's, who's kind of part of Team Trump, they've, they're now sending strong messages that this thing is already basically over, that it's super exaggerated, you don't need a vaccine, all these things like, I kind of was thinking myself, it's good to see them confirming these things. Don't be stupid. Zionism is the biggest problem in the USA. It's one gigantic problem. Baran says, is the Dhammapada a book? Yes. I think I heard of that book. Yes. It's the Path of Dharma, Sayings of the Buddha. Arun says, do you know about, I don't know about this person's killing. I have no idea. I don't, I've never heard of this person. Sorry. Okay, a few more. How are we doing on time? Yeah, I got a time for a few more. No vaccines is bad for all of us. 
The vaccine question is uh, is is a complex one. QAnon is fake. You're too gullible. Uh, QAnon's not fake. You're an idiot, and you're now banned. Ooh. All right. Slavika says, last night I spent two hours on an evening walk. Today I was in the garden from 7 to 1.30. I feel like I picked up maximum energy from the sun and walking again tonight. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, I, in terms of the vaccines, I will definitely not be doing any <laughs> coronavirus vaccine. I won't. You know, do what you want. Absolutely. No way. No way. I would let them inject me with that stuff. No, no, no. But as I said, the vaccine thing is like, in the you know, overall, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Do your own research, make your own decision. Uh, that particular vaccine, I absolutely no way. Bill Gates and all his crazy plans, no. I'd say flu vaccines in general. Why is everyone so afraid of the flu? It's no big deal, guys. I had the flu several times as a kid and growing up. Yeah. Mariano, someone who's selfish only thinks of their own advantage. Yes, I'm aware of this, Mariano. Don't you think Buddhists are too focused on the self and less than people around? Nope. Not at all. But Buddhists are quite... Uh, Buddhists uh, are extremely compassionate and uh, quite concerned about treatment of other people. Stephen Joseph Blanchard said, AJ, hi, AJ, deep state on life support. Yeah, I'll do another Q thing maybe in a few days, but I think I think we say in English the tide is turning. I think that uh, uh, it's not just the virus thing. I think we're going to we're there's some cool things happening that are not only not just behind the scenes anymore, starting to become out in public. And uh, I don't know, I have a I have a good feeling about this. I think uh, we're going to see some, uh, I think the virus thing is just going to blow away, like I already said. Uh, but I think other we're going to see some other great things happening. We'll see. I don't like doing predictions too much. Uh, the virus thing is, is obvious because it's already basically done. So, but the other stuff I'm not going to talk about. And are you interested in Japanese news? Nope. <laughs> I have basically no understanding of Japanese politics at all. And quite honestly, I'm a guest here and it's not my business. It's the, you know, the Japanese will, it's up to the Japanese to decide how they will, you know, how, how they will run their government and what they will do. And I just, you know, in that sense, uh, I won't say obey is not quite the word, but I am... I do my best to be a very good guest here, right? Like if they, you know, if 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 they made us a law with about masks and stuff, I probably would follow it here because I'm a guest in America. I'd disobey it, but uh, here I'd probably follow it. But they they don't have a law about it. Your baby's always crying. It's this time is his, uh, uh, Osman says, but your baby's always crying. Uh, yeah, because this is his uh, time to eat right at this time every night. <laughs> so he, he goes to sleep. He sleeps for an hour. He wakes up for food, which is always right in the middle of my show. <laughs> or almost always, frequently. That's why you always hear him crying. And then my wife feeds him, which he's doing now, and then he'll go back to sleep. So this is our, our pattern usually, most nights. Oh, that's interesting. Manisha Singh says, In India, if you want a good husband or life partner, you need to do fasting on every Monday. 
I didn't never heard of this. This is interesting. Uh, they are fasting for husbands and for ch- and children and for long life, and they fa- fast for good health for the family. Well, that's cool. I like it. Nice. Send me more information about that on Gab. Quite interested in that. Are you afraid of the Japanese government? Asks Vishwat Kumar Singh. Not at all. Yeah, like Stephen Blanchard, this is, yeah, you should, guys could look into this too. Keep your body's pH in the alkaline state. Illness and disease thrive in acid. Yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff. Um, actually, you know, if you guys know the, the book Slow Burn, uh, which is actually about a book about running, but uh, the guy, what's, I forgot his name, the guy that wrote it. Um, but anyway, the book discusses diet as well, and he talks quite a lot about this. Uh, issue of alkaline certain foods are uh, al- there's alkaline and acid right baking soda is Stephen followed up exactly baking soda kills cancer baking soda is another one of those dirt cheap super cheap I mean super 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 cheap you know remedies that can uh, help you if you get sick baking soda you, you it might upset your stomach a bit but if you do it when you do it fasting that's what I do um Baking soda will give you sodium as well. And, you know, one of the snake diet uh, recipes uses baking soda. Instead of table salt, you use baking soda. And uh, so it will alkalize your body while you're fasting and you get the sodium you need. Also some potassium. So then you're fasting and fasting alkalizes your body too. Uh, And yeah, it kills cancer. Exactly right. And lots of other things. So, right. Let's say you're sick. There's many different ways you could go about it, but just things you can do. Let's just say you get a normal flu. Forget the current stuff. You know, you could take high doses of vitamin C. It's cheap. You could take high doses of vitamin D and K2 or just sunbathe. <laughs> if you really want cheap, you could just lay in the sun. And uh, for and to, don't get burned, but as long as you can without getting burned. Cheap or free. You can take baking soda, super, 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 super cheap. You can eat, you can fast on baking soda with potassium, um, which is the snake juice, which the snake diet calls snake juice. Uh, it just it's just it makes the fasting easier and it makes your body even more alkaline, which is why it be, the fasting feels much easier. So you can fast. That's going to help your body heal and kill viruses and bacteria and diseases and uh, pretty much anything bad. Um, I'm trying to think of any other ones. I mean, just those. Just do those things. And if you really feel like you're uh, still sick, none of these, if that stuff's not working, dry fast. So no water, no food. Do that for a few days. Then do a snake juice fast. And then, you know, lots and lots and lots of um, vitamin C and vitamin D again. You know, these kind of things, they're so cheap, right? You're not a slave to the medical industry. You don't have to pay gigantic amounts of money to the drug companies. Uh, these are great ways to keep yourself healthy. And of course, the best thing is to avoid getting sick by just eating healthy food and uh, you know exercising and all of that. But if you do feel yourself starting to get sick, do it just when you're just starting to feel sick, right? You just feel like you're getting a cold or something. You can do a bunch of these things. Just research them. I, I don't have time to give you all the details, but research all these things. And uh, these are all very cheap, super, super, super cheap or free things you can do. And you, it'll, in almost every case, you know, you, you won't get sick. Seriously. You might, you'll feel a little bad and then very fast, you're fine.
Uh, let's see. Yeah, Rosalind says, I too am a guest in the USA. Yeah, it's nice. It's fine to be a guest. I think it's just the key thing is, is to be a good guest. Just remember that, you know, like I'm not Japanese. I'll never be Japanese. I remember that. I always know that. And I'm not going to criticize them. Or I don't really get involved in Japanese politics. I don't care because it's not my country. It's, you know, I'm a, I'm a, it's just like if I'm live, you know, a guest in someone's home. You know, I'm just grateful and polite <laughs> when I'm here. And I, and I genuinely, I very much like Japan and Japanese culture and Japanese people very much. How to consume baking soda in, uh, like, you know, look on the snake diet, snakediet.com for a recipe, but you, you put it in water, like a liter of water, uh, two teaspoons in one liter of water, something like that. It can give you, it can upset your stomach a little bit sometimes. Don't, don't eat <laughs> and take baking soda because it's going to mess up your digestion, right? It's better to do it fasting. Right, pretty says fasting increases T cells in the body. T cells are your immune system. It fight they fight disease. They st it stops cancer rates in the human body. Fasting is the best therapy for everything. It's really good. Indeed, indeed. There's a good book by Paul Bragg on fasting. Now he did plain water fasting, but I quite like the snake diet fasting. We're adding in just the baking soda and Potassium really helps a lot, I think. Or dry fasting. My parents have a pharmacy business. They say K2 is, a da is dangerous for you. It influences blood coagulability. Um, it has, yeah, just, just do your own research about it. I don't have, you know... There's, I can't go into all the many, many details, but K2 works with vitamin D and somewhat with vitamin A. So you don't take them individually. You want to take them together. There are also different kinds of K2, MK7, MK4. It depends on which one you're taking. They have different effects. So you have to just you're gonna have to research all this stuff yourself. I'm not a super expert, but basically... Take the right kinds, the right amounts, with the right things, you're fine. Lisa says, in childhood, I was not always obedient. I've often chosen other ways, so I've discovered and experienced a lot more new things. I was never scared to not follow the rules. Nice. <laughs> Conspiracy theories about Bill Gates don't make sense to me. Why on earth would Bill Gates do that? Do some research on old Billy Boy. He's not a good man. He's not a good man. Do some research on his dad. Bill Gates' father. Research Bill Gates' father. Baby killer. Baby killer. Bill Gates believes the population on earth is too big, so he wants to kill people. In this case, vaccines. Use vaccines so that more babies die. That's my belief. You don't have to believe me. But do some research on Bill Gates' family, on his father. And then you'll have a more understanding of Bill Gates himself, if you understand who his father was and what his father did. Evil man. Evil. I think we're about finished, guys. <clears throat> Arun says, Gautama Buddha fasted for six years to get enlightenment. Yeah, um, pretty famous faster. <laughs> Super, and yeah. The Buddha, Gautama Buddha fasted uh, very aggressively. You know, you'll see in some Buddhist countries, you might see statues of Buddha. You can see his ribs. He looks like he's starving to death, right? And then he realized it was too much. Right, but it kind of showed his willpower, his discipline, his incredible discipline, self-discipline. Um, but then, you know, it taught him a lesson. He realized, well, this is making my body weak. This is not helping me, uh, you know, spiritually to, for enlightenment. And his enlightenment came after he finally ate some food again. 
and started eating a little bit. And this is why, you know, he later then he taught what he called the middle way, which is not to go too extreme with some of these things because it's not helpful. Okay, guys, I guess that's it. Yeah, like Nasser says, Bill Gates isn't a scientist. Why do we need to believe him? That's the other point. Okay, if, if you never don't believe the evil stuff, uh, I think he, uh, you know, his father and some things he said, I, I don't think he's a good guy. But more to the point, Nasser has the better point. He's not a scientist. He's not a doctor. So why would you listen to his advice about vaccines? That's crazy. What does he know? He knows as much about vaccines as I do, as you do. He's not a... Uh, He's not an immunologist. He's not a, uh, you know, a medical doctor. So, you know, like, why, why, why would you put your health in his hands? He made software <laughs> for, he made crappy software. <laughs> he made bad software. <laughs> Which, <laughs> so anyway, enough of Bill Gates. I, I don't want to get into Bill Gates too much. I don't really care about Bill Gates, honestly. Uh, if you're interested, do some research about Bill Gates' father. You might find it interesting. All right, guys, lots of love to you. More to the point. Um, you know, I think the Buddha had good advice. I'm going to read it again, and then uh, we'll finish the show. Dhammapada, the Dhammapada, that's the name of the book, the Dhammapada, Dhammapada, the way of Dharma, the path of Dharma. 167, don't follow wrong laws. Don't be thoughtless. Don't believe false doctrines, teachings. Don't believe false teachings. Don't follow the way of the world. Nice. All right, guys, lots of love to you all. And uh, hopefully we'll do The Hobbit tomorrow. I've got to, if I have time, I didn't have time to read today. Uh, I just want to reread the chapters uh, before I talk about it. So until then, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit to the VIP program. Bye for now.